there are generally multiple ways of solving a word problem, sometimes using a table, sometimes making an uh, equation, sometimes just guessing and checking until we find an answer that works. In this case, we're going to take a look at the problem and then look at a couple of different ways to solve it. I went ahead and wrote out a chart here to save us some time. Andrew cashes a $180 check and wants the money in $10 and $20 bills. The bank teller gives him 12 bills. How many kind of each bill does he receive? How many of each kind of bill <laughs> does he receive? So we're going to use our problem solving plan. The first thing we need to do is understand the problem. Andrew has a check that's 180 bucks, and he wants the money in $10 and $20 bills. So the bank teller is going to give him a bunch of bills, a total of 12 of them. What we need to do is figure out how many of each of those he has so that it equals that $180 that he was actually supposed to get in the first place. So our plan this time is going to be to use a graph, or a, a table actually, and see if we can just sort of stumble on the right combination. Let's start with 12 $10 bills and see what we come up with. If he has 12 $10 bills, then that's all 12 and there's none left to be 20s. So that would be a total of 12 times 10 or $120. Now that's obviously too little. So let's try uh, 10 $10 bills and two 20s. So that would be 10 times 10 is 100, and 2 times 20 is 40, so that's $140. That means that if we had 9 $10 bills, that'd be 90, and we'd have three 20s, that'd be 60. 90 and 60 would be 150. We're getting closer. Um, what if we had eight ten dollar bills? Eight ten dollar bills would be four twenty dollar bills. That would be eighty, and eighty that's one hundred and sixty. Still getting closer. Let's stop here and take a look at what we have. The pattern shows that every time we add something to the twenties column and take it away from the tens column, our value goes up. Specifically, it looks like every time we take one away here and add one here, it goes up by 10, because we went from 10 down to 9, and 2 up to 3, we went from 140 to 150. We went from 9 to 8, and up from 3 to 4, we went from 150 to 160. So if that pattern holds, we could save time. We wouldn't have to keep going through more and more possibilities here. It should mean that we just need to go down two more on the 10s and up two more on the 20s to jump by $20 here on the total side. So let's try that. Let's go to 6 10s and 6 20s. Now we have 6 times 10 is 60, and 6 times 120, or <laughs> 6 times 20 is 120. 120 and 60, yeah, that's 180. So let's see if that checks out. If we start, we're going to check it out by going backwards. If we had $180 to get, and we were given 6 20s, then that would be $120. And then if we were given six tens, that would be sixty dollars. Yeah. Sixteen hundred and twenty is a hundred and eighty. So it checks out. Looks like we got the right answer. Now you'll notice that there were a couple of possibilities. We could have just started here at the top and worked our way on down, subtracting one each time here and adding one each time here until we got the entire table, but that would have taken quite a while. So sometimes it's good to actually combine possibilities. We combined sort of a guess and check method with a building a table method, and it came up with a pretty reasonably quick answer.